So, so we have any questions? questions? Wow. <laughs> God, that's a good reaction. <laughs> um, but believing that coming here today and talking to you is as worthy as anything. Because seriously, I'm not lying. I, I, I've gone through so many changes and, you know, most people go, I go, even if I'm lying, it's still nice. But seriously, I think if I hadn't gone through everything, I wouldn't have become this person. And I think it's essential that you do pass on stories and that you do... You, look, life isn't full of bad luck, it's full of incredible lessons. Because it's been an amazing journey, you know. And it ends up with me here today talking to you. And hopefully, if I get 10% of you that today have learnt something from this, then it was worth it. Because this isn't about me. Why on earth after I've met all those people and done it? Like, you know, in Kalgoorlie at 8.30 in the morning, I go to the kids. If they don't clap or, and they think it's about me, I go, I've met Princess Diana, I'm going to go off stage and come back on. Because seriously, why would I be in Kalgoorlie at 8.30 in the morning after that? And so then they get it. It's about them. So my greatest achievement is that I'm nice. <laughs> Thank God they clap. Anyone else? What? Oh, thank you. You're sweet. I'm going to give you a kiss when I get off here. <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. Where did you get the microphone from? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you bring that in your bag? Yeah, my rucksack. Yeah. Um, I'd just like to thank you for being a mentor to all of us. Um, you've been a big inspiration. Um, I you. just want to know uh, what drives you to keep going after all the hardships you've been through? Well, because I really believe that if you don't understand whatever happens to who you are is pretty incredible, how people treat you is not your fault. My mother called me a slow learner. <laughs> um, but I really believe, you know what, as people often say, I find people whinging about things and I just go, you know, people go, oh, they, you can't get a drink, you know, it's at these functions. I go, it's free and it's French champagne. Go to the bar, so. I find a lot of things that if you don't learn what happens to you in life is to teach you something. So I, it's quite remarkable that I'm not rocking in a corner with voodoo dolls at Leona and that. <laughs> but you know what, if you look at her now, my mother said, you know what, she might look like Audrey Hepburn now. And my mother was a very, the, my mother was in the picture with Barry Humphreys up there, a beautiful woman, and she said, you know what, she might look like Audrey Hepburn now, but one day she'll look like Joan Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> my mother said it. She's a witch anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but look, to all of you, uh, do you understand? I loved Leona for 14 years. I think what we did was incredible. I don't like how she treated my mother. And do you know we had 36 staff. She walked out one day and she never came back. Do you know all 36 staff had to go to therapy and she tried to sue me because all the staff wanted to work with me. And so my Buddhist approach is that when you love someone, you bury them and you go to the grave and you remember all the good times or you spend the rest of your life rocking in the corner going like that. So that other person, I don't know. Because seriously, your mother's dying and it must have hurt her so much that she had to stay alive for three years to see that her son would be recognised. Because look, I was ashamed at homosexual. Everywhere I went for two years, everyone thought that Leona was abused. Now can you imagine? My mother would just say, shut your mouth, there's no way in hell they're going to believe you. So it's... Not fashion I'm talking about. It's personality. So don't buy a product. <laughs> <laughs> no, I buy a product. You know what? I spoke to the last, you know what? The other night I spoke to her for the first time in 12 years. And you know what I said to her? And I had witnesses. The Zimmerman's nearly collapsed. I said, can you just put on your face that you are proud of what we did together? Like, can you just get over this? And by the way, you're wearing a diamond and sapphire brooch we bought. I bought you after our opening in Henry Bandell's. And I said, but I didn't realise that Ros Reigns was watching her. And when I was on stage, she was rolling her eyes and all that. So Ros Reigns writes the whole story about that Leona could have got one and not Tommy tool 
you know, event because of how many times she rolled her eyes. All I wanted to do is walk around and say how proud. Like, because you left me, honey. And you know why she left me? She didn't want to open any stores. She didn't want to show in New York. She didn't want to do any more catwalk shows. She has a store in LA. She has a store in London. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That was really inspirational. Um, it opened my eyes, and you made some really good points about the up-and-coming generations yeah. and how they do just think about themselves. And a lot of things they do get, uh, and they don't have to work for it. And you really pointed out that you can make it if you try hard. And everyone needs to realise that they do have to work hard, and it's not just going to oh, be... You know what? It's, when I had to work with kids for the last four years, I other one to be Robbie Williams. Or on home and away, or big brother. I mean, seriously. Yeah, Disturbing. It's not about them, it's about everyone, it's about the community. And I came from a community which you described sort of the whole McDonald's thing. Um, and it's very true. You know, there's people out there that can make it if they try. And there's other people that are around. Oh, you're cute. Come down here for a cuddle. Come on, we can leave your question down. See, as I said before, to show in Paris is easy. Look at that. I don't care about the rest of you. I care about her. You can say it. Come on. Oh, you got friends here? Touch my bottle and go back to Come on, Okay? I'm going to help. I've got something, especially I robbed my stores before they closed. Um, <laughs> you just reminded me of one good bit. You're good. You can be my assistant next time. Okay, sorry. We can still have more questions just while I find this one little bit. Shaved head homosexual, we've done that bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got it. Okay, any more questions? Hello. You're very, what was your name, cute? Cryer. <laughs> what? Tiana. Tiana. God, seriously, the names. <laughs> Hi, um, Pull the microphone down. Okay. Hi, I bought my first skirt from you when I was 16 and I loved it. So I just wanted to say thanks. Well, you know what? I love you. As I say to people, thank God. <laughs> like, seriously. I, most designers today go to me, what do you think about my shirt? I go, it's got 17 sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> and people used to say to me, your suit looks very good. You know, I go, did Tom Ford do black pants with a zipper at the front and a waistband? <laughs> Don't tell me he did a black suit with a lapel and two sleeves. <laughs> did he go crazy and put a white shirt with a collar underneath it? No way. <laughs> We want me to put a third leg, so I thank you, because you, if you wear it, then yeah. it comes to life. Well, it was 16 years ago, but my question is, is about manufacturing in general. Do you think manufacturing's dead? I'm in the footwear trade, and I, I'd love to see it come back. Is oh, it I don't think the government here supports manufacturing. And Susie, when I did Qantas and we were interviewed, you have to make it offshore. Yeah. I mean, there is no... You, the wool, I work with AWR. The wool is sent overseas, comes back and you buy it. Like, it, it disturbs me. So, at this moment, the only thing you should all be looking at is upping your units, taking it overseas, because you'll be able to sell it. If you made it here, say you made 15 here, they'd cost you $80. If you made 100 over there, they'd probably cost you $15. So, everyone, whatever you're doing, Make a hundred of them, take it offshore, you'll get a price, you'll spend the same amount of money for what you would have done here. And write those to the government. Can you hear me? Unfold your arms. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, when you came to Just Darwin, bend it down a little bit. When you came to Darwin a few years ago, actually why like, school would come and see you. Was I good? You were excellent. Yeah, see? <laughs> I nearly finished my advanced diploma in fashion design. Yeah. And that experience constantly pushes me to work harder and harder. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come up to Darwin and see us. Thank you. Now I'm going to cry. <laughs> but you know what? Thank you, thank you. See? 
Out of those two people, if you don't understand, the only way to be nice is to know to be really bad. You will never see Colette Dinigan and Kira and all those people here. Because I'm not a fashion designer. I'm actually a person who's making your lives feel better. And that I did that in Darwin and one person, I tell you know what, I'm going to have a bod craft to do <laughs> Which I didn't have a full knee reconstruction because I can't go off like a box of crackers. <laughs> I wanted to say thanks for speaking so openly as well. Um, and also, I was wondering, you said to approach department stores. How do we do that? You go to department stores and you ask them for advice. Is there a, a specific um, if you go person, to like a job title? I would go, go from Colin Gunsey down to David Bush, just act interested, okay. okay, and also just say you don't want to sell your range to them, but you would like their opinion, okay. because the only reason I sold white shirts in David Jones was because I removed every other white shirt, if you're going to put me on the TV commercial, <laughs> like seriously, so they would love to give you advice, yeah. and, so, and it's incredible advice, because really, what most fashion designers don't... You've got to dress for reality and fantasy. And why I hate Australian magazines at the moment is because there should be pages where there's witchery white shirts and all that sort of thing. So that everyone every day can get dressed like American Vogue. You know, like, and then some fantasy. So understand, I call it Morrissey Needs. Oh no, forget that. I call it Peter Morrissey Needs. Peter Morrissey Wants. Peter Morrissey Desires. My needs are t-shirts and jeans. My wants are business suits. And for women, you know, a beautiful dress, but my desire is a tuxedo and an evening dress. And by the way, if Tiffany's over the last nine years has only sold seven diamond rings, but they sell out of key rings and stationery every week. Yeah. So, they know their needs. Thank you. Pleasure. Hi, sorry. Thank you for your talk. You made me cry. Um, I've got a number of interests. I told you I'd make them cry. I know. <laughs> Um, I can't believe I'm making you all cry. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I've got quite a few Morrissey dresses at home. I absolutely love them. Boys felt fabulous. Morrissey. They're good, aren't they? That, my 21st birthday especially was the Morrissey dress. And good girl. Um, Which one was it? A purple, really low back. Oh. Three cord out, split front, yeah. and a chain. Yeah, ah. Oh. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> In a silk jersey. Silk jersey halter neck with yeah, a gold chain around the neck. I designed that one. I think you can tell the ones I haven't designed in the last few years, haven't I? You don't get a root in them. I mean, can I just say this? I just, sorry, I'm listening right for a minute. And I have witnesses to that. Guys come up to me in the street. You know, as I say, I don't give a shit what the fashion public or the press think. But I have Lebanese guys come up to me in the street and go, oh my God, I get rooted every time I wear my shirt. And as I say, as I say to people, Akira does kimonos, Colette Dinigan does lace overseas, the ladies buy that aren't buying art any, I won't go there. Everyone gets rooted in my clothes. Do you think that I, look at me, I go to them, I'm really excited with my title, but I never went, I'm going to make rooting clothes. <laughs> but you know my evening wear, you know that dress you wore, isn't it like that? You only go like that and it's on the floor, isn't it? Alex Terry, not on your life all that barney. <laughs> See, now I'm going to go, am I? I'll just ask my question now. Are you crying too? Come down for a hug. Come on. Come to Daddy. Come on. I like being hugged. Why are you crying? <laughs> Honey, what they've put me through in the last 10 years up there, I ain't going anywhere. Because guess what? I'm finally actually being respected and appreciated. And as I say to people... Okay, you know as I say to people, and my manager is here. I mean, seriously. Do you know what? I've been known by four people. Well, can you stop crying? I'm going to make a look at it. Good Lord. Take that. <laughs> yeah, I'm blowing tea towels. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. So, my manager's here tonight, and I want to thank Lauren Miller. You know what? In all the shit I've been through, Ren Avery was the greatest gift I was ever given. So, you all know what he did bad? 
But do you know, at that time when the owner left me and I was publicly disgraced, that man backed me, not Tag Late, not Gazelles, not all that. And he used to go to me, how on earth? And he ran over and buy paintings because they couldn't light his cigar. <laughs> Intelligent, but not to tell the media. So, my gift to Rene is that for the rest of my life I'm going to be a beautiful example of what he did well. All the other owners thought that they could buy my mansion, redecorate it, and not respect the people that used to like how it looked. So, with Lauren Miller, who's sitting up the back, who believes in me, and we walk around and I just go, everyone goes, how are you doing with all the press about Morrissey closing? And I go, the taxi driver's going, oh, I hated them as well. Can't wait to see what you're doing next. Call the shop owner. I said, it is disturbing, and I'm humble. But everyone's, I mean, seriously, I've been here for 26 years. I've tried four times, and everyone's still cheering. Thank you. And I'm going to do it. Okay, yes, sir. I'm not, I'll get you one. Because I've just realised I saw that. <laughs> Stop crying. Good Lord. I'm excited. You're all sweet, aren't you? Someone give her a hug and a wipe that says, touch your bottom. <laughs> you know babies like the bottom pattern? <laughs> Have you heard to me as well? Yeah. I was on those for six weeks. This lady over here has been passionately waiting. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, I'd just like to say... Oh, sorry. Yeah, you go. I need to leave. So, you sure? Just you. I'd just like to say I'm studying my best work in fashion design now. And I want your dresses. And I can only hope to make someone feel this because I felt when I wore your dresses. Are you crying too? No! <laughs> Like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you know what? I can't say this enough, and if you don't understand, and if I could bring my partner down here now, I can't thank you enough for what you're saying because seriously, to find out that people actually, it is a revolting industry, the fashion industry, because you know why? Because most of them don't give a shit about their customer. And I just want to say this one bit, and this is for you. Um, <laughs> I want to fashion people's lives. Do you know why? Do you know I'm the only... I'm going to give you a big secret here. I'm going to like this. But I'm going to show you I understand that the economic situation by helping you economise but not compromise your needs, wants and desires. I can't believe icebergs, wildfire, all those restaurants don't write on their windows on Thursdays. We know you're all struggling, so pastors are $10 tonight. Do you know that 500,000 Americans lose their job a month? Do you know that it hasn't even started here, it's 18 months. So when you find out what I'm doing next, I'm not opening on Rodeo Drive because it's not the right time. But imagine if you wore, bought a Colette Dinigan dress or an Alex Perry dress and you walked into home and said, how do I think? Your nan's lost all the superannuation, probably two of your brothers have been retrenched and your mum and dad are fighting to pay the mortgage on their home. How do you look? I think you look like a fucking bitch. Okay. So what you've got to understand is that if you're going to do fashion now, understand that people can't go anywhere. People can't even afford to do anything. So take that into consideration. As I say, I don't make balls. I study the economic climate. I don't make a tuxedo when no one's going to balls. So the reason why I'm doing McDonald's is because 80% more Australians will be eating at McDonald's. I want them to feel like they're not poor. I want them to feel like it's fabulous. What to do to your knee? Hip. 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 I was on that for six weeks. Yeah. Hideous. Three months. Uh, I've got to go to December. Oh. Ooh. Look, um, I'm not going to cry, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind hugging you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry, but I'm not starving. Thank you. <laughs> Look, um, I'll, I'll, I want to thank you. I think that was incredibly inspiring for everyone here, uh, in particular. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really found it inspiring. Now I'm going to cry. Um, the fact that you're really proud of being Australian and also proud of your parents and where you come from, and and you're obviously um, proud of yourself and, and who you've become is well, very, think, very inspiring to, to me and I'm sure to everyone here. I think honesty is the most intoxicating thing yeah. you can listen to. And as I, I only found out two weeks before my father died that he actually thought I did everything 
to try and forget. And my father was there, vegetable watching me on TV, and he goes, how? And I said, because I want to show every other son of an electrician in this country who, when I went to Igloo Deli and bought Devon, because he didn't know what Mortadella was. Have you ever bought five dollars worth of Devon at Igloo Deli? <laughs> <laughs> That's when I found out I was poor, that it is possible. And so my father finally got it two weeks before he died. So I thank you, because I think most people should admit what they're scared of. How can you learn anything if you didn't know it before? Yeah. Um, also, um, the stuff you said about giving um, is where, where it's all about. I, I think you're 100% right. Every su- success I've had in my life to this point has, has been when I'm giving. Whenever I try to take, whenever I try to concentrate on me, it's a abysmal failure. So it's a really good point. And, um, but you should, but you know what? You should give to get back. Yeah. Or you're an idiot. As I said to people, I don't help charities. I should look good from helping charities, but you know, I, I've gone to McDonald House, I cooked dinner with Carl Sandland for 19 under six year olds dying of leukemia and cancer, and people go, Did they recognise you? I go there under six, dying of leukemia and cancer. They don't have any idea. But I do it because I want to do that, but it should make you so give, but make sure you're respected for it. Um, I just got a couple of questions um, about fashion. That's okay. Um, Still, okay. <laughs> one is. Um, Don't want really to do my fashion talk, but George yeah. <laughs> The longevity of, of your career and um, and fashion longevity in general. Like, what is it that is consistent? It's, it's everything's changing. There's a new season. Like we've seen so many people talking today. You know, they've got one season, like five five different ranges in one season or something. A brand has to make you feel something. To, to last a brand Morrissey makes you feel something Peter Morrissey you know Peter Morrissey gives you the power to feel the seduction of actually living life so Nike you know when everyone puts on Nike sweatsuits and all that sort of thing they actually feel like they've exercised <laughs> Walt Disney's mantra was not to make cartoons or build amusement parks it was to make people happy Morrissey actually gives you the power to live life to wear the look and live the life because as I said to people, most people won't ever get to go to Manhattan. If on Friday night you put on a long dress, you serve martinis, open the door, you're in Manhattan. So I get that from a philosophy point of view. How do you translate that into the actual clothes? By understanding, I make clothes based on where I think people are going and how they want to feel. I mean, if your husband hasn't taken you out to dinner, and you've got four children, then you put on my satin dress and some high heels, do your hair and makeup, you'll have a babysitter booked in about 10 minutes and you'll be out at dinner. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> no, I think what most patients I don't understand, I think of the woman. So I think of the woman that, I think women are the most exquisite creatures God ever created. I've got a twin sister and my mother in heaven. Their chairs should be pulled out, their doors should be open. But not if they've got Hollywood tape on. And not if they don't dress like a woman. Because the only time a gentleman will be a gentle man is when he finds a gentle woman. And so as I say to people, I dress the woman that is going to be walked to the taxi. I dress that. So you should whisper elegance. So you've got to, when you design, you should think of where the person's going and try and make them feel special. Just a long time question. Um, the final question is about uh, sexuality and sexiness. Um, the, the clothes that you have and, and the stuff that you do, especially for women, um, I think is absolutely amazing and incredibly sexy. Um, They're sensual, sensual, not sexy. Okay. All right. Paris so, Hilton's sexy. <laughs> <laughs> she should have tatt- tattooed on her forehead. No, I won't say that. So you've, you've told us so many times today you shaved head homosexual and all that sort of stuff. So... People think I'm a closet heterosexual. <laughs> so, where's, so for you, how do, how do you express the, the sensuality or the, the sexiness and the femininity in your, in your because, clothes? Well, to, because to be gay or straight is a proper shit. To be a gentleman is what life is about, or to be a gentlewoman. Because seriously, I mean, God, I'm going to kick him in the balls. Well, I'm sure mum and dad have done it before me. Um, because I have to work with gay kids and things like that who are a disgrace. Because they think their mum and dad don't understand. I understood why mum and dad would never understand. So I showed them everyone who loved me. And so they felt comfortable. 
because I think most people use their homosexuality or their sexuality to stand out. Your personality is your best accessory, because seriously, when people say, what do you do? I'm a fashion designer. <laughs> Some people even ask me if I tried the women's clothes on. Look at me. Seriously, that's disturbing. So, I think, I think women, I, you know what, I am a closet heterosexual. I dress the state of origin blues. I'm a member of the Sydney Swans. The football players call me fake fag. And because I really believe that every man and woman should be made to feel special. And when I met Princess Diana, and I don't know whether you read it in the paper, she, do you want to hear the story? Yeah. yeah. Princess Diana arrived in Australia at the Victor Chang Institute, you know, the last time she came here? Yeah. Now, Charles was with Camilla at that time, but she's representing the royal family. And Joe Bailey was my boyfriend at the time, so he was doing her hair. And she walked down the carpet on her own. And unbelievable, at the entertainment centre, a thousand dollars a head, thousand people. And I was a dag at this time, so I actually made out I'm going to dance with the princess, because I can borrow and dance. So Buckingham Palace put security on me, and I got to meet Diana, and I went up to her and I said, and you know what, do you know why celebrities love me? Because I slide on my knees, on a one-dimensional reason, going, oh my God, Naomi Campbell, Black, Supermore. <laughs> but when I talk to Naomi, and she's a fantastic person as well. So I go up to Princess Diana and I go, I've just got to say, <laughs> as a princess, you're unbelievable, but I just watched you during dinner, and I got to meet her at the table, she rocked on her own in the chair, she rubbed her bare shoulder, but she's just walked down the carpet representing the royal family who the Queen's let now, Charles and Camilla, do that. And I go, I thought the princess was good, but you are the most incredible woman ever. And I said, do many people like, you know, tell you, come up to you? And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I'm gay, but I'd do you. And she goes, what does do you mean? I go, I'd root you. And she goes, no, you might think I'm, you know, I've never met anyone like you. And I said, so in the last 14 years, so every man in this room, no one had ever told her. So the only social shock she had taken with the commoner was with the boy from Karina. And my father died with it on his lap going, if Dinah likes him, he's all right. <laughs> Will I wind up? Oh, sorry. Hi Peter, um, I was lucky enough to interview you last year for Sunsilk and Fashion ah, TV. At, at home. home? Yes, that's right. Yep. Um, I just wanted and to I gave your girlfriend the dress. That's correct, and me my dress, so I just wanted to say a personal thank you. Pleasure. And also, um, what are your goals for the future? To be happy and to satisfy people and to get a reaction like this everywhere I go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to wind up now. Oh, sorry. I've never been this popular. My head's going to be a little bit crazy, honey. Hi. Um, just quickly, um, can I have a hug from you? Yeah, come on. Uh, come to Daddy. Um, some, of, um, some of the volunteers as well. Yeah. They want a hug as well. Lord. <laughs> See, lucky I am gay. <laughs> come on. Do you want to hug me while I finish? This is turning into a little bit odd. <laughs> Lips. I don't understand it. Put them on your nipples or your penis, then they work better. I don't understand it. What if someone pull your eyebrow? And you know this lady behind me here? You know how we're talking about homosexuality and talking all about, about that? This is one beautiful example of what I'm talking about. Her sexuality is her business. And I applaud her, and I tried to tell her the other day that. She will know what I'm talking about. I have to stand up and defend homosexuality, but you know what? I want to shoot them. I mean, what are you doing tongue passing on TV on the news? And also, hi, you know, like, seriously, we are human beings and it is disrespectful to not understand they won't understand. Because by the time I'm finished with you, you'll like the man I am. Because most of you shouldn't understand the homosexuality side. So I thank God this woman's around. I think she's amazing. Because her personality way outdoes the sexuality. Doesn't my personality way outdo the sexuality? Come on, Sam, kid. Come on. <laughs>
Okay, so today I've made you all cry. So I don't need to say this. I'm a success if you understood me and I thank all of you and I mean it. If you don't understand that, you know what? The only way to be nice is to know how to be really bad. If other people understood the show in Paris is easy to come here today and get what I got back, I thank all of you. So, you're a success, all of you, because you understood it's not where you get to, it's how you feel along the way. Now there's this quote, I say it's a Buddhist quote, but I'm going to be honest, I make these things up because it's disturbing, I'm a bit of a booger. So when you climb the mountain of success and you get to look at it, it's usually three kilometers above where you ever dreamed it would be. When you go back to your friends, some of them think you're underplaying it, or some of them think you're exa you know, exaggerating it. Take as many people to look at as possible, and then you all go, oh my God, wasn't the view amazing? Because today, where I thought my lookout was and where you put me, I'm 10 kilometers above. So I hope you enjoy the view from my lookout. Uh -huh.